Okay, welcome back to the All Things AI podcast from CES Live. And this is uh, effectively the final interview of the first day, January 9th. And our guest is uh, the founder and CEO of TechSun, Brijesh Kamani. Welcome, Brijesh. Thanks for inviting. And uh, it's uh, great to be part of the podcast. Great. Um, do you want to tell the audience a little bit about yourself and Texan? Yeah, definitely. So myself, Bridges Kamani, I'm founder and CEO with Texan Group. So we are primarily a design firm supporting on end-to-end -end product engineering services uh, on the embedded hardware, embedded software, uh, AI, IoT, and uh, manufacturing side. So we take a complete turnkey as a ODM approach where we build the entire electronics product uh, be it uh, onto the consumer side of a product, automotive product, healthcare product, fitness product, uh, and security and surveillance. These are the areas where we do contribute designing a different products and uh, support with the prototyping, certification, and manufacturing. So do you want to give us a little bit on what kinds of customers you have, any big names that you'd like to talk about that you've already announced? Definitely. So part of uh, our journey uh, in this area, we've been working very closely with uh, most of the silicon companies uh, in terms of as a silicon company, as a partner, and uh, as a customer as well. We work with uh, ST Microelectronics, we work with uh, Qualcomm, we work with uh, Renesis, uh, and uh, we do work with the different other silicons for design to manufacturing uh, kind of an approach. And on a customer side, we work with uh, enterprise customers, SME and startup, all set of a customer. That's a pretty wide range. And seems like a lot of your customers and partners will be at CES. So how many times have you been to CES and what do you think about CES 2024 so far? How is it different? Uh, I've been to CES uh, mostly every year from last 10 years. And uh, this time, uh, it's great to see a lot of uh, movement is happening towards the automation, making life easy and safe. So on the safety side, I can see a lot of movement has been uh, done. If you see in the electric vehicles and uh, automation, the way automotive industry is moving, it's much faster than the previous pace. Uh, and there is a great uh, opportunity for everyone to do the automation on the IoT and artificial intelligence. And the AI is now coming to most of the product and uh, most of the areas and the use cases of the normal uh, human life. So there's a lot of uh, things that uh, we are seeing to this time and see us in the artificial intelligence. That sounds, I think we see the same. Uh, what I would ask then is, as I mean, you've been doing this for a while, you've been working um, on this, what are the challenges to scaling um, AI in, uh, especially the edge right now? So the uh, thing that everybody talks about AI, uh, it is very important to understand that the complete life cycle, the way uh, AI or the machine learning uh, has to be built uh, in the product. So it is important that before moving forward and making an entire product uh, with the AI feature, doing the initial minimum viable prototyping and testing the performance over there. The second part is uh, building the model uh, with the right framework and the right silicon that supports that. So that compatibility is very, very important. And once that has been identified and built uh, it is important to tune that. Uh, so tuning of those uh, hyperparameters and uh, model is very, very important. Uh, these are little technical terms. Uh, but uh, once that has been done, the deployment, and then how do we make sure that those models uh, really gets uh, real-time updates as well? So distribution has to be planned uh, properly. Most of people try to release the AI model, but then if the... Uh, after release, the maintenance and the uh, upgradation has not been thought of. That's uh, another uh, important thing has to be thought of. And talking to move these models on the edge, it is very important to understand the particular edge uh, neural processing capacity and how do we 
you know, do the architecture design over there. Because if your host CPU is continuously busy with processing the video or audio feed or the data for the machine learning side, then the host CPU can malfunction on the main functionality. So it is always recommended that the host to focus on the host activity and the neural processing should happen on the separate silicon or on the separate core. Uh, that's the best approach to deal with. And once this has been deployed, which is, you know, your primarily a machine learning has been deployed. Uh, another next level uh, to make it a pure AI is how to do uh, auto ML pipeline and how to connect that for the continuous machine learning training and the self-training of the model. That's another critical parameter that has to be architected at the time of uh, development. So these are the things that most of the time people do not anticipate at the time of development and they just with one product feature on the AI and eventually that feature does not function well and they have to roll it back. So that's what I would recommend to keep uh, in the architecture part. So, I mean, you said a lot of important things here. One is identifying the right use, use cases, right in the, uh, identifying the right data sets, uh, analyzing, estimating what is the uh, capacity of the hardware you have or what you need to build into the hardware to deliver the use cases that you have. Then you talked about the ease of uh, modeling and deployment, building the models, maintaining the models. Um, so seems like quite a bit of work involved. Um, now you've been working with Brainchip for the last nine months or so. I mean, we're we're really uh, glad to have you as a partner. How has your experience been in terms of all these challenges that you just talked about? I think uh, it's something uh, great experience working together because um, uh, with the Brainchip, it's been nine months as a partner, and we are exploring and looking into this kind of a challenges for all different set of a customers together, going together, uh, being brain chip as a silicon on the neural processing side and Texan as a design house, jointly going to a customer is making a great sense because customer gets that awareness that what are those uh, pointers that they have to keep in uh, mind and uh, how to be prepared with. And a uh, statement coming from a design house as well as a silicon house gets them completely resonating that, okay, this does make sense that what we are trying to, because as part of a, making a product for somebody else, uh, the biggest challenge is to get them with us, you know, to guide them. So that guiding journey to customer, that is really happening very well uh, with Brainship uh, being a close partner. That's good to hear. And I think the other thing that you mentioned earlier was, hey, how how do you, keep the host CPU from um, getting overwhelmed with the amount of uh, um, acceleration or AI acceleration that it needs to do, AI processing that it needs to do. Plus, I think if you're talking in terms of scale, you need to be able to downsize some of those components so that the overall solution is more cost-effective and more broadly proliferative. Is that something you want to talk about? Absolutely. That's a very important point as part of the AI product development journey, I would say, uh, that uh, optimization of the AI model and deploying with the right architecture. And I'm talking the architecture in a sense of uh, hardware as well as software, both the areas, right? On the hardware, it is essential to keep the host uh, busy with the main job, not to focus on processing the data. And I think that's the part where this relationship, this partnership with Brainchip is striving, where we are seeing that uh, we can have the separate processing unit with the new launch chipset M.2 card, which we are integrating with some of our uh, processors and uh, some of our uh, ready IP and uh, SBCs and uh, some modules, right? And to offer a complete package to the end customer, that's where the value uh, for the end customer, where we are doing those R and D for them, and they are they are not spending the money for the R and D. They are spending money on something which is already ready built and readily tested. So the way we are building jointly here together 
as a partner so is to make sure that once it goes and deploys right the host can have its own activity to be done and then uh, npu is focusing on doing the processing part and part of the architecture we are trying to build here is having a multiple options so if there is a more need of a more ai to be processed there's a more separate parallel m.2 interface can be or the card can be plugged in that can solve the multi uh, needs or multi video stream to be processed so that's where the value creation is happening yeah so now if you can start using multiple video streams potentially other sensor input uh, through uh, something that's neural processing, leaving the host processor to focus on what it needs to do in terms of host processing, uh, managing streams, so on and so forth. Um, where do you see these types of applications um, going? Yeah, I think there's a, a lot of application into security surveillance and human safety side. That's what I'm seeing. Even in the CES show, if you see and compare most of the new innovation that is happening towards making life easy, you know, with safety. So that safety aspect or the security and surveillance and safety aspects, that's where there's a there's a great demand in the different industries uh, where this could be a great way to fit in. Also, if you see the new vehicles in the automotive, that comes with a lot of cameras, you know. Previously, it was like a one camera on the backside of the car just to back it up right uh, but now if you see in the new cars it's like eight cameras ten cameras it's a surround view things like that so when we are seeing there's a lot of cameras and video data and processing is coming right and then autopilot and kind of a feature where uh, ai is crucial uh, so in this kind of an application having this kind of approach having a separate npu processing those streams on the data separately and keeping the host uh, focused towards decision-making uh, part. That's kind of an application I can see on the safety side. Uh. So sounds like a, a lot of exciting prospects and uh, a lot of work to do at the same time. So Rajesh, thanks for coming to the podcast and giving us your insights. And we very, very, Wish you the very best for the rest of CES and, of course, all of 2024. Thanks a lot. It was a great uh, talking and sharing the thoughts. Thank you. Thanks.